My name is Peter Smith. I'm an urban pastor in the Presbytery of Detroit. I also have the privilege of serving as chair of the COLA committee in preparation for the 221st General Assembly that will be held in Detroit. And I want to encourage you to attend uh, and see the mighty things that God has in store for the Presbyterian Church USA and also what's happening in the Presbytery, in the Synod of the Covenant, in the Presbyteries of Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, and Maumee Valley. I think the video tells a mighty story of God's amazing grace as we abound in hope. Detroit is number nine on the list of cities in the United States for its most amazing architecture. The Renaissance Center was the original vision of Henry Ford II. He built the Renaissance Center in 1977 as a rebirth for the city of Detroit. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's pockets of excellence here in Detroit, which is really, really positive, but the, the city from a land standpoint is a huge city. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation and beautification of the riverfront that takes visitors through plazas, allows fishing, you can ride a carousel, get something to drink, or just be leisurely and sit by the water and enjoy it. I think Detroit's an amazing city. It really is an amazing city. The Quinter Cut was an extension off of the Detroit River Walk. It's an old railroad line. It is sub street level and it takes people from the Detroit River into the heart of the city. And um, it's a rails to trails. It was a rail and now it's a trail for people to walk and bike. And it's a real safe family way to get exercise here in the city as well. This is a great place for people and families to live and be educated and, and, uh, and grow again. I think that being in Detroit, I see signs all the time of revival here, and, and culture is a major part of that. Arts and culture is a significant part of that, and that brings people together. That, that brings people together in ways that no other thing can. This museum is the largest of its kind in, in the country, and in 2015, it will be 50 years old. We honor uh, the folks that have gone on before us that make significant contributions to African American as well as American history. And uh, we are very, very proud of this institution and most proud of the exhibit that's behind me. And Still We Rise It's our permanent exhibition. It's 22,000 square feet and it has over 20 galleries and takes you from prehistoric Africa to modern day Detroit. Detroit was crucial to the Underground Railroad Network in the 1800s. In 1830, the governor of Canada abolished slavery and said to the blacks in America, come to Canada. And, and they left the South through a network of churches and individuals who hid them and helped them get across the river. I believe over 40,000 uh, came through Detroit in the Underground Railroad and went into Canada. I wanted to know more about African history. And when I came here as a volunteer, I learned so much stuff here. So I decided that I wanted to be an educator. We like people to understand that really the Arab American story is the American story. It is not different than your family. Maybe your family came three generations ago. My family came a generation ago. But it's not different. They should come and see the museum. This is a wonderful place. We have a great staff, and uh, I assure you that you will have a very positive experience, and you'll have a much better understanding of the Arab American community. Education is our primary mission. We see approximately 35,000 school children every year, and about 40,000 other visitors every year who come to learn about the Holocaust and the lessons of the Holocaust. Approximately six million Jews, five and a half million non-Jews were murdered only because of their religion, in the case of Jews and Jehovah's Witnesses, only because of their heritage. 
but I think coming through you will understand better the history of what is the worst in humanity culminating in what is the best of humanity. And those who help the least among us, whatever their stripe and whatever the reason, those are the true heroes of our country, our world, and all our religions. You know, this is a gritty city. Um, there's a lot of people who uh, never give up, um, who've got incredible will. I think that's what it takes to, to bring it back. We are, we are all in here together. We are in the same boat. If there's not a strong Detroit, if uh, Detroit, if Detroit does not survive, then the other community will not survive either. Detroit is a place where people want to be. 20 years ago, Detroit was a, a place where people were leaving. I think it's our responsibility to look at how many people um, are hungry in Detroit first. And I think it's our responsibility to look at how many people need help in Detroit first. We provide services every day of the week. Uh, and what we have in front of me is our food service line. Uh, we provide a barber, we have a shower facility, also one of the last places downtown that is non-residential uh, that provides shower and hygiene care. Folks get clothing, uh, complete outfits, shirts, underclothes, shoes, socks. We also then have doctors that come in every other week, housing specialists, substance abuse counselors. We, we try to provide a holistic uh, kind of care environment. I graduate June 2nd. I probably wouldn't have went back to school had I had that push. Come down here, get into you know, get into it. It's a wonderful feeling. Detroit is a, a very uh, unique city. Um, if you're born here, especially, you have a, a close fellowship with the people. We take in everybody anywhere. It doesn't matter if you live in our zip code, if you're in the su suburbs even, we allow you to come here to the center. But I would say mostly it's the, the children. The children could come here. Uh, we do educational classes here. So the biggest class that we have that the children love is the sign mine classes here that we teach them how to sign mine to pray songs. And then they're able to go anywhere and everywhere and praise God in front of other churches or community activities, whatever we're doing with them. We have a stepping team also here that we kind of pride ourselves of being one of the best ones in the city of Detroit. <laughs> and the kids love that. And we try to teach the children about God and who he is to them so that they will have those skills for the rest of their lives. So, like we try to teach the kids here, like, you know, what, you know, be responsible, be respectful, don't disrespect anybody. Our greatest challenge here is to constantly remind the children we are a family. We have to learn and we have to conquer, and that's what we're doing. We conquer right now. The love of God is here in this city. He is here. There is hope. There's love here. And you know what? We welcome you with open arms. And these children just want to love as the adults do here. And so I would say to them, God is in this heart of this city here. I'm Stanley Edwards, and we're here at the Barnabas Youth Opportunity Center, located at 3530 Grand River. This has been a vision that God put on me for urban ministry to reach out to our young people in the community, who we came to provide positive opportunities, encouragement, as the word Barnabas means, to encourage them that there's a positive thing for their life, positive direction, and their people care about them. And we have three program, four programs here that we're proud of. We have the after school program with the computer lab and the tutoring. We have the school to work transition program. We have the mentoring program. And one of our newest programs, we have partnered with Swing for Dreams. He's brought that into Barnabas Center where we're teaching the young people the golfing and catting program. Barnabas gave me an idea, a beginning, on how to create structure for my life. And structure is what you need. But because Barnabas was here, this was somewhere I could come, relieve my frustrations, have someone to talk to about it. And I mean, it was, it, it's been good. So I want to be good to someone else's children. I believe in my heart, it's meant for me to be here actually 
especially working with the young ladies, to teach them and let them know that I've been there. Whatever you're going through, with your, with, with what's happening in life, I've gone through that. You can get over it. You can make it. You just have to keep the faith. I wanted to start a caddy program. So uh, being an avid golfer, I said the best way of getting through, you know, to our young people is through golf. Uh, I've always been inter uh, interested in our students because I feel like, you know, we need the education. And in order for us to survive nowadays, you know, we need to have social skills. So I feel like golf is the answer. And with the help of Barnabas and, and the team that I have right now, I'm very grateful to have the people on my side, you know, working with the students now. So we're in the process of uh, teaching our students how to be caddies. Uh, so next year that they all will be working at a country club and we're also going to be working on getting every last one of them uh, scholarships for college. And we hope this is encouragement for others who see how just giving of yourself can produce the positive results that uh, have happened here on this corner. Part of the excitement um, and just uh, inspiration I felt from this congregation was their engagement uh, making disciples to the world. And they want to bring the, the living gospel uh, in forms of words and also in forms of service. So the congregation members are very, very invested into uh, with the local community by being a sister community with the Highland Park Church. A few years ago, we heard that the Highland Park Church, the Park United Church was having a difficulty and maybe was going to be shut down. We sent one of our members, uh, Kim o Kim, to Highland Park Church. Amazingly, like a lot of churches from the region showed like so much hurt, and a lot of people, a lot of people came out. Now they have a lot of members, a lot of active programs going. So it's a beautiful church now. The Highland Park Presbyterian Church is really like a jewel that at this corner there's a lot of work or mission work or services that they can offer to the uh, community. Just, we're just one family at the end of the day. There's this one church. There's no Korean church, there's no Highland Park church. There's just one church like that. The Presbyterian men were looking for a project in the community. So I suggested this, this area, or this project, this uh, cool city park belongs to Focus Hope. And um, they established the park about, uh, about three years ago. And over time, it needs uh, some renovation. That's what we're doing today. And as you notice, we have young and old, uh, people from many areas of metropolitan Detroit. <laughs> I think that um, in Detroit we have to learn how to become a city, neighborhood by neighborhood, help each other. I think that will bring Detroit back. That's not somebody else's job, that's our job. And nobody's going to do this for us but us. So we need to put our heads together and say, hey, this is a problem, let's work together and resolve it. We got about 120 people out here from all 87 churches, the Presbyterian. What a great day to do it. We're at the site of Brush Park Manor, Paradise Valley. This is what was called Paradise Valley back in the 30s and 40s. It's been open for about 10 years, just a few blocks from the heart of downtown Detroit. I would say we are the best. I mean, I have been in numerous buildings in the city of Detroit, but they don't do what we do. This is like a diamond in the rough. We sit here and everything else is falling down around us, but we're gonna stand and they're gonna build everything back up around us. I walk from, uh, from the building to the river down to the Renaissance. And, uh, we're very safe in this area. 
this jewel in the midst of nowhere became an oasis. I was like, wow, these individuals here have ideas, they're living. Truly, I'm impressed. So I love this place and plan on continuing my walk of faith here. to listen because of ourselves we are ashamed how many of us have seen a hungry man and failed to lend a helping hand how many of us have heard God call and failed to say here I am these questions are rhetorical don't answer just ponder on why you should help another without being glorified or honored be yourself a son or daughter or have one of each of your own Detroit is your responsibility if you call it home. Extremely far from Rome, so don't do as the Romans. Let the enemy in your home inside of a fake Trojan. From me to you, here is something you can put your hope in. God's desire. We build yours if it's broken. From desire we get want. From want we get more. From want we get fulfillment. Through fulfillment, hope's a revolving door that will rotate for the children when they mature. So therefore, take action, my beautiful people. Action. Gather your crew, begin filming the sequel. Action. Sing it now, put it in effect. Correct the city's posture. No hunched over stance. Stand tall with head high, become the comeback champs. A beautiful song and dance. Motown alive and kicking. Auto factories fell apart, cast a new vision, shove both hands in healthy living, loosen the earth, plant a garden and come to find a measurable worth. For knowledge of people work, they're closing the schools. Do not let this become a living city of fools. Hand the children your tools, hammer, nail, and chisel, so they can hang dreams at eye level and carve out heartfelt riddles in the middle or outside, wherever you choose to stand. Just know a little of your time can help your fellow woman and man. So take a stand with a bound in hope or sit for the same old saying. More talk and less walk won't bring about change. In the veins of revolutionaries, you will find love and passion that has been poured out to create hope action. 